shame. Hello and welcome to episode 25 of Seddon Lacey's Comic Stash. That there, that's Seddon. I'm Lacey. And this week, we are doing another top five. But it is top five runs or books that we want to read and have never got round to. I've been thinking of it as my... Dirty corner of shame. My dirty little secrets, the things that um, I feel like I should have read at this t- at this point, and obviously when we'll get into it, we'll probably go into a bit of a bit of why and, and all that. But um, yeah, things that I feel like as a comic book fan, um, I would get chastised for uh, for not having done yet, or more well, probably truthfully, I chastise myself for not having got to yet. <laughs> but we will start, as always. With Reading Corner. Happiness is just around the corner. And I'm going to take the mantle this week. Because You're I have man. a little adventure. I have a little adventure with my Reading Corner this week. So, at the weekend, the boy played a blinder at football. Scored two, set, banged it in the corner for the winner. They won their cup game. So I treated him to a jaunt to Abstract Sprocket. Mainly because there was one thing I wanted to pick up, but secondly, just so he could uh, have a perusal through the long boxes. Um, He picked up a issue of Batman and Robin from uh, 2011 and an issue of uh, Hulk Destruction, again from 2011. Both of them mid-run of story arcs. I did notice that when you... When you sent me the picture, I didn't notice it mid run, and I was going to ask you, and I'm glad you mentioned it. Is was this based off the covers? Because we've talked before about our kind of formative years and things like that, and the power of a cover, like how yeah. that can draw you in. And 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 I'm glad that this is someone many many years later, but at age we was <laughs> falling into the same trappings that we did. Yeah. So I basically said to him, "Was I like, right?" You can have what you like, as long as it's not one of the collected, you know, I'm not paying for it. It's not from the top shelf. (laughs) Just because, you know, just because you scored two goals, you're not getting a 15 quid, 20 quid book, but you can have your go at that and you've got a fiver limit. So he went and perused and found those both at 220 each. He was like, oh, he's thinking about this. He knows he's only got a fiver to spend. So he got two. Um, but I went in to pick up issue one of the new Tom King six-part limited run, Batman Killing Time. We won't go into much detail on this because A, it's issue one and we both know that we're getting the whole run. But fuck me, this is good. What I've also read this week is I've taken one of your uh, request or your reading corner suggestions, read Tiny Titans One. What did you think? It's fun. It it's is a fun, fun isn't John. it? It is fun. I, I, I think like when the thing that kind of pulled me to, as I said, I, I'd been listening to a podcast by the guys who make it, and they're fun in their podcast as well. But but you but you could feel that like they wanted to make something great for kids, but they had. They were grown-ups as well. So it yeah. kind of drew me to it thinking, oh, do you know what? I think there's going to be something there for um, f- for me as well as as, as for the, uh, the younglings. Yeah, um, that was one of the ones that I really should have probably given Will my phone and went, read that. Um, but I didn't think about it because he was too busy reading the ones that he did buy. And I've also read issue one of Doc Macabre. Uh, which is another one of the freebies off Comixology. Very fun. It's a sort of haphazard doctor who goes around dealing with uh, people's zombie issues. And he thinks he's doing it by, you know, being good at getting rid of zombies. <laughs> It's normally by fluke that they happen. Um, this is a free issue run. So the first one's the freebie. Free for the little crack bit there. 
Um, I enjoyed it and I will probably end up trying to find the other two issues or even potentially if it's done as an actual one a wanna grab it because it is very very good i liked it a lot i feel like i've heard of it and i'm actually doing a bit of uh googly woogly googly. now because um to try and see uh whether i've heard of it because i've experienced it in any way shape or form or whether i just noticed it on the um on the freebies um, it's an IW, uh, IDW. Yeah, the, the, um, the, the cover really kind of rings a bell for me. So I wonder whether at some point in time, maybe it had been on my radar, but yeah, certainly not something that I'd read. But yeah, no, that was, that was a fun one. And definitely, uh, well, I will probably look at the rest of, because it's the first time that either us have, for, for a while have, uh, jumped our reading corners out of Marvel and DC and, uh, got a bit to the edge well i'd love to say that um i i've done the same as you but i can uh i can tell you now i stayed firmly in marvel and dc <laughs> and i think i will be for a for, for a little while yet um um so I, I what have you been up to what should i say in like you um um i was very excitable and uh about uh batman killing time um it's tom king Someone who I've said on here, you know, like we've, we've covered Vision. I talked about um, um, my desire to read every little morsel that he has, inclusive of some of the stuff that I've actually already read of his. Um, now, we will talk about it uh, in full because it is it's six issues, isn't it, I believe? Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, a six issue story, you want to give it the whole six issues because, uh, you know, we've all seen... TV shows, we've seen comics, we've seen movies that are very good at the beginning, but don't sort of hold strong. But I will concur with Chris. What I've read and uh, seen so far, I'm loving this. Um, this is very, very good. And I reckon, we'll pick up a, I reckon we'll pick up a lot of this. Um, but my God, it's beautiful as well. The art yes. in this is phenomenal. However, that's for a later show. And of course... Who wants to be boring in their reading corner and do something almost identical? But it inspired me so much that I'm going back and I'm reading the Tom King Batman run. And that's the other thing I, I've done this week. So I've gone <laughs> back to, and I say that I haven't fully finished the Tom King Batman run. I initially, I think I read through probably the first 50 issues and then uh, bought the rest, but never kind of finished it off. So this is me going, no, I'm going back and, I think this is something that is quite a pattern in comics is that it's not that you forget what's happened, but certainly if it's a story you've enjoyed and you're coming back to it to finish it off, I get very tempted into going back to the start again. So yeah, this was um, a post Scott Snyder run and uh, it's, and it's the first trade that I read, which for, for trade buyers it's I am Gotham. Um, also I am Gotham kill me. I think it actually is, or, but it might, that's one of the lines in it, but it might just be, I am Gotham in it. Um, yes, I am got from the Batman Rebirth. Yeah, right. and um, I mean, I, I um, love this. And this introduces two new characters into the uh, Batman uh, mythos, a brother and sister. Um, and uh, again, Tom King writes books I like. That's something that I am convinced. And don't get me wrong, he might do one that I don't like at some point, but so far I haven't found it. But uh, this is a phenomenal batman run i'm not sure whether it's so knocky sucks off in this first trade but it pulls you into the batman universe it establishes who tom king's batman is especially if you've come to it from the new 52 snyder one and you can see that it's not dramatically different but there's slight little edges and some ideas on there and and yet again this is absolutely phenomenal on the art side um and I will be going through this um, probably over a, a lot of reading corners to come. I, I will touch on this, but I don't want to go too much into plot because I do think, Chris, it's something you'll pick up at certain points. So um, uh, we'll, we'll talk about plot stuff it, as and when you get there. Yes. So we will go into why we're here well, this week. Well, no, sorry. Oh, no, I forgot. Sneaking. Yes. So, so in the in the vein of Reading Corner, because um, Chris and I now have Marvel Unlimited and um, I want to read more, I want to read everything, Get let 
find a way to make me read 29,000 issues overnight. But um, for future reading corners, I wanted to kind of actually use this Marvel Unlimited subscription. So, and <laughs> I found from doing uh, some of the other bits we've done on the channel recently that I'm a little bit addicted to spinny wheels. So <laughs> what I've done is I've knocked up a little- You do love a wheel. I, I do love a wheel. I've knocked up a little spinny wheel and uh, I've put on there a few of the series that are on uh, Marvel Unlimited. Uh, and when I say series, it's, it's, it's runs of characters. And yeah. um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to spin the wheel, whatever it lands on, I'm going to be reading in the coming weeks. And then for my reading corners, I'll be doing little synopsises and uh, and letting you know where I am on my reading corner adventure. Um, so the only thing to do here really is to get a spinny wheel up. Um, now, I've got a spinny wheel. <laughs> Rather than doing it Royal Rumble style, we're going singular spin and the winner gets it. But to give a heads up, because the spinny wheel is covered at the moment, um, on the wheel, we have uh, Captain America, when he was written by Mark Grunwald, which is a run that I've read bits of. Um, it's from, I want to say the late 80s, early 90s. Um, it's It's... It's got things like Cap Wolf in it and stuff like that. So it's kind of quite a fun a fun run. That mm. is, it is a term. I'm not going on an actual fun run. Um, we've got Hawkeye, which you and I have started on previously, and I have read some of it, but this is taking Hawkeye to its fruition. Um, God, I've, I've covered just, the wheel. I've just thought of that. I've just, I can now do that. Yes, and they are, all, they, they, they are all on Marvel Unlimited. So, yes, yes, you can do that. Um Bad planning by me by covering my picks on, on the wheel, though, isn't it? So I can't yep. actually see it. I'm trying, but, I'm trying um, to read what... Uh, Black Panther's got, on there. So that I talked about that recently where I, I, I dabbled back into, and this is the Christopher Priest Marvel Knights run of Black Panther. I loved it, and I want to go back and experience it all in kind of one fresh go, because at the time I was reading it monthly, and... Um, so that is on there. Immortal Hulk, which I've talked about loads of times, and this might be the push for me to actually do the 50-issue run that it is, that I love what I've read so far. So I'm actually quite excited about the idea of going back to it. And if I've Can't not miscounted... Two. Uh, 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 two? Is there two more? Yeah, yeah, because Hulk's Ooh. orange. Uh, the purpley one is Black Panther. Obviously, Cap's pink. Hawkeye's the bottom blue one, but I can't read the yellow. Ooh, I know that right. I put Fantastic Four classic. So based off of our previous episode where we read Fantastic Four number one, um, I've put down here, and I'm kind of in my head, it, it, it'll be the, the whole Stan Lee um, element of the run. And I can't remember what pick six was on here. So uh, well, let's spin let's, it and find out. And if it wins... Let's spin it and find out. Oh, and... Ah, yeah, it was a uh, it was dead Daredevil. current run. Yes, it's Captain America. Now, this is actually quite a chunky run. This goes over a number of issues, but as I say, I've read bits and bobs of it along the way, so I'm very much looking forward to actually getting to this. And I think this might be quite fun because I know some weird shit happens in this run as well, some normal shit as well, but some weird shit. So <laughs> from this point <laughs> onwards, for my reading corners, I'll be giving updates on where I am with Captain America. Nice. But but also, yes, you are right, Chris. Uh, we now have full access to all of that Hawkeye run. So uh, future shows in the books right now. We'll, we'll figure out where that's going to be in the schedule and, and we will do the rest of the Hawkeye run. Yes. So we will now do our piles of shame as uh, or reading black holes and other such wonderful terms that we can use for these. But as always, with our top fives, we have honourable mentions. Yeah, we didn't talk about that before the show, but I was hoping you were going to say you've got some honourable mentions. I didn't go mad, because obviously there's so many comic book runs out there, but there was a couple that um, I really, that was so close to making my top five for, for reasons that I was, I was hoping we could sneak a couple of honourable mentions in. Yeah, so my honourable mentions, and most of these are either stuff that I've got sat in the house, so I need to get around to reading them, or they are ones that I'm like, yeah, why haven't I, that didn't make my top five. So, one of them 
is impossible to get, but I fucking want it. The Batman Heavy Metal Band Specials run. Um, these were ones where they actually had heavy metal bands involved with it. Um, there's an Ozzy Osbourne one, a Ghost one, Sepultura, Mastodon. Um, I think it was eight, seven or eight F issues, but never got a UK release. Uh, the only ones I've been able to find even on eBay are in Spanish or German. I'm not even sure if it got an English language release. Well, um, we've talked about this offline and I know how much um, you want this or, or kind of how, how much of a desire this one is. So, yeah, that's, that's I thought it might actually make you top five um, because I, I know how much, uh, how passionate you are about it, should we say. Uh, the reason it doesn't make my top five is on the basis of I'm not even sure if it's actually attainable. Um, if I knew that it was it was there and that could be got, then... Yes, it we need a mysterious five. We, we need a mysterious benefactor, don't we? Who can magic these up for you? Uh, <laughs> so yeah, if you if you want to apply for that job, stick stick your name down in the comments. We'll, we'll take it. Yeah, uh, another couple of the ones that are in the house that I just need to get around to going to. Uh, Deadpool versus Punisher, and Batman who the Batman who laughs. Very popular One, as well, the Batman who laughs, isn't it? He's he's a quite a yeah. very a very modern. I mean, I I, I want to say he's been around for three to four years at this point, Max, and uh, he seems to be one of those zeitgeist characters that has really captured the attention of the comic book world. Yeah, and he's fucking cool looking. Uh, well, I think that's probably the big selling point, isn't it? When you're fucking cool yeah. looking, it's it's an easier transition at that point, isn't it? Yeah. Um... Next is one that is doable, and I will get around to doing it. The OG Fantastic Four run. After That's... reading that on uh, last week for the uh, the old school thing, yeah, I want to I want to jump in there. Well, it went um, on my spinny wheel, so you know that I am also desiring to read that run as well. Yeah, uh, Sandman, because it's. Neil Gaiman and held in, you know, God tier level of joy. I really, it's one of those I feel that I should actually read it at some point. Uh, one of them I can't read yet because it's not out till June, but Batman 89. And if I ever get the time and the way of getting all of it, the Grant Morrison Batman run. They are my honourable mentions. Um, of of your honourable mentions, um, the the one that I've actually read through in its entirety is the Grant Morrison Batman run. And um, uh, bearing in mind how much we bang on about uh, great Batman stories um, and great Batman runs, uh, it is bloody marvellous. It is absolutely fantastic. The only thing that I will ever throw any shade on it is... And Grant Morrison actually was doing the big crossover event at the time, Final Crisis. And I did feel like at certain points it lost a little bit of steam because it got very involved in that crossover. But actually, it was always going to be because Grant Morrison integrated it into it. But but there, yeah. but yeah, there's a couple of a couple of um, yeah, I was gonna say week. Week's probably a bit harsh, but. It, if it didn't have that links to the final crisis one, I would have probably gone. Yes, that is an absolute, it would probably beat Snyder and Tom King's like a uh, monthly issue experience. Um, but it, it, it slightly drops down because of that. Um, and there's a few um, se season, seasons series in it, isn't it? He starts off in Batman, you get Batman and Robin, Batman incorporated, but, but yeah, it is brilliant. Um, very, chunky so there's a lot to get through for that so yeah good luck with that one but uh but yeah brilliant absolutely brilliant yeah so it's one of those if i i sort of looked at how much it goes over and i'm like that that's that's a whole lot of uh of content and lots and lots and lots of books so you know that's that's if there's a ever happens to be a dc unlimited and it comes over here and yeah. has all the things that's the point where i jump oh, on God something damn. like that 
Yeah. But yeah. That, I... as I said, that's more of a pipe pipe dream one of I would like to read, but probably isn't going to happen. I, I'd um, I'd happily join you and go through it again if it was on something like a DC Unlimited and we can get it because I was reading a lot of that, much as I said uh, earlier, monthly. And I do find with Grant Morrison's stories that if you can read it as a big chunk, I think it's actually even better because you're not having to wait for those payoffs and maybe those uh, undulating dips in the story don't feel so much when you can just go to the next issue straight away. Uh, and yeah. I said it on the uh, X-Men episode, he reinvented the X-Men. And I'm not going to say that what he did with Batman was as grand a reinvention, but I, I think after Batman had been telling the same sort of stories for maybe about 10 years at that point, he was definitely a very fresh voice and had a very fresh look at the Bat universe, if not Batman himself. Yeah, as I said, I've, as I said, I've read a couple of odd issues of Morrison's Batman. Yeah. Um, so I, I've read bits of it and I know that I liked it, but it was just one of those who have never done the whole lot. But yeah, that that that's the one of the honourable mentions that is probably not going to be happening. <laughs> oh, we'll get there. We'll get there. But, We've got all the time the in the world them... and all the money, haven't we? No and no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, so uh, what makes your nearly list? Um, so there's, there's two that I've got uh, for my honourable mentions. Uh, the first one up is... and. There was actually quite a few of these runs that were um, considered for me, and it was a particular run on Daredevil. Uh, uh, Daredevil is a character that I really like. Daredevil is a character that has a plethora of runs that people consider classic. Some long runs that aren't so much, but uh, so there's plenty to pick from, and there's quite a few of them that I, I've never got around to reading, but it's it's Anna Senti's run on it, and she comes after Frank Miller, and I think why I really want to read this is when I started reading comics and the Senti was doing Daredevil, I wasn't in a position or at like kind of the reading level that I was at or my interests or maybe probably just my age to vibe with it because it was very dark. The art was very different to what I was getting in my shiny um, superhero comics. So I didn't read it at the time and it had been quite hard to get for years because yes post frank miller so you know there are trades galore the frank miller run but not so much from the anacenti now it has been a bit more available over the last few years but i've got enough stuff in my house i probably couldn't bring this in as well uh, but it is available on marvel unlimited so i think this will be my chance and and i kind of want to see it's that tough thing i think in in any art thing and and it's sport as well we often say this about football like how do you follow a great manager? And I think the person afterwards is never revered, even if they do great stuff, until much, much later because they followed such yeah. a great run. But, um, but yeah, that that is, um, that probably didn't make my top five because I think it's going to be a reality in the near future. It is on uh, Marvel Unlimited, so um, it won't be a dirty little uh, shameful secret for much longer. Um, and the other one is a Suicide Squad now. I realise when I say things like Suicide Squad, I expect you to uh, have shivers down your spine and and go into the the the, the cave of that awful movie, um, of which I agree a hundred percent. It is a fucking terrible movie, but I, I, I want to jump in there and say the movie fucking. I, as we all know from a few weeks ago, how much I hate that, but I have read some of the Suicide Squad runs and some of the collectives and they're fun well now you say that this isn't necessarily the fun ones that you've read so the one that i want that is on my just outside my hall of shame is the original suicide squad run so this okay. is when uh john ostrander and i think it's not i think it's 87 and it was off the back of a, a a dc event and you'll often find this when we talk about stuff is um, new series often um, uh, come out of events, but there was no concept in comics of the Suicide Squad. There was no villains going out and doing um, very, very dangerous things on behalf of good. Uh, there, no, there was no Amanda Waller who, uh, creating all of this. There was, there was no basis for this. And this is that original taking it from 
issue one and a little bit from the Legends crossover that it come out of right the way up to its end. And I, I, I should have checked this beforehand. I think it's about a either a 79 or an 89 issue run. So it runs for a lot of issues, but I've always heard amazing stuff about it. I've never managed to read a singular issue of it. Now, again, I think this for, for me to get it now would require me buying a lot of trades, which I'm not adverse to. But this is like you said about the uh, Morrison Batman. I think what I'd actually need to do this or to want to do this, it would be something like a DC Unlimited. But and, and when I say um, uh, the original Suicide Squad, like this is pre Harley days and all this sort of stuff. So this is, yeah. you know, it still has Captain Boomerang and, and characters that you do see in the movie. But but old school, uh, old school, original um dirty 80s version of suicide squad um sign me up please i'd love to watch a bit i'd love to read a bit of that yeah so i've not done the old old school stuff um so the ones that i've read are does have harley in um yeah. does have killer croc in um and dead shot and things like that but it was pre the film because they were stuff I was reading when they announced that they were doing a film of it. And I was like, what's yeah. the Suicide Squad? And read the sort of stuff from there. So, yeah, it isn't the stuff that's been tarnished since the film, but it is with the, the players and, and people that are in the film. Well, there's quite a few bits from that kind of era of DC, and I know they have some quite like highly revered runs, but... Um... Because the, the the news agents, going back to this stuff again, the news agents that I was getting my comics from only had Marvel. There's a lot of DC stuff from around this time that I would mm. love to get my grubby little mitts on um, at, at a certain point. So uh, if you're listening, DC and Warner, bring the bloody app or bring the service to the UK and, and put it at a decent price point so that we can start wading through some of this, uh, this back lot of DC. Yes, because we need it. We do. We need it. So, as you start, as I started last top five, Ooh. you go first. So, so um, fun, oh, sorry. Seven. What is number five? Shame. Well, I'm actually um, going non-Marvel and DC. I know you said it for the other bit, but actually for my, for my uh, top five piles of shame, um, it's uh, Image Comics and it's East of West. And one of the main reasons why this is a pile of shame, partially, and you'll hear this a lot in a lot of the shows, I own a large part of East of West. I have yet to take it out of its cellophane wrapper and actually ever experience any of it. But um, the big reason why this shows up on my list is it, it's it's one of my favourite writers. So um, we've, we've talked about Tom King and my love for him. Um, I think I touched on this writer slightly when we did... Uh, the X-Men episode, and it's Jonathan Hickman. Uh, and I've read a lot of Jonathan Hickman stuff. I've read a lot of his Marvel stuff. Um, and I've got a bit of a black hole where it comes to his creator own stuff. And mm. this one really appealed to me. Uh, 2013, it, it started to come out. And there are um, still uh, dribs and drops and, and, and blibs and blobs that come out now. But to, to the main part, like, ended in, in 2019. But it's a, it's a science fiction western um, and okay. it's, set in, it's set in the United States, but a kind of a dystopian future of it. And um, it's about the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse coming out. And it, the art of it that I've seen and um, is is uh, really good, really distinct style. Kind of fits that Western style with the integration of like horror elements to it as well. Um, I just feel like I'm missing a trick by not having read this. It feels like it is everything I'd want in a comic and more and written by someone I love. And I look yeah. at myself in the mirror and say, why haven't why? you read this? Why? And even worse, why haven't you read it as you have it in your house? Um, but, but yeah, so it jumped in because of that. It, it's a, it's a guilty, uh, a guilty secret because I go, there's no reason why you shouldn't have done this. Everything points at this is this is something you would love and you own it. Bloody do it. And I was hoping by saying it on here, it might prompt me to bloody do it. Yes. Do it. Do it now. So for you, what is your number five? Shame. 
my number five is one that I feel everyone probably should read because of the level it's held up to. Sin City. Okay, yeah. It's one of those like it's one of those sort of tentpole massive graphic novel things that, you know, that V for Vendetta, Killing Joke, uh, one of the other ones that will come up later. Um, you know, these big sort of books that are held in such high high regard. And um, yeah, I've just never, never gone and went, I should get that. And it was just like one of those, like, I really, really should read it at some point. Yes, it's what I'd but, say on that. I, it, 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 there's lots of it. There's lots of uh, individual Sin City sort of kind of uh, limited series um, that build up the big story. And um, from my experience of Sin City, which I've read most of it, I'm not entirely sure I got to all of it, is that some of it is really enjoyable. Some of it is really good. Um when it's not so good, it really isn't good for me. But then I find that with latter Frank Miller stuff in general, um, is yeah. that um, he knocks it out of the park, but when he doesn't, oh, you know, sometimes I think he comes across like the grumpy old man that he is now and potentially out of time. And that's fine in some bits because uh, to a large part, you're playing in a, a like a noir-esque uh, story. So you are going yeah. to get like a lot more kind of... Um, um, sexism, violence towards women, ah, things like that. But but sometimes he tiptoes into a world where I go, oh god, I, I think you actually revere this stuff a bit more than you should. Um, but it, yeah. is, it, it, it is to the large parts really, really good. Um, have you watched the is movie? One, yes, I've seen both films. I've forgotten about the second one. Did, did, I was going to say, did you notice how I said? <laughs> Have you seen the movie? Because I refuse yeah. to acknowledge that there's more than one movie. <laughs> and so, yeah, so it's like, I love the first film. Um, and that's the the yeah. bit that I'd want to read. I'd want to read yeah. the stuff that makes up that that first yeah. thing. Because I think that is the first... It, when In the bit of the actually, book versions, I think that's the first... So I'm the first so like, the first two... Yeah, it, it chops about a bit. So, like, the movie actually is, I think, quite good at taking bits across. I think it's four of the stories and integrating them into the singular story. Um, but but for me, that's when it's at its best. Like, when the, I, I, I really like the movie, and I think one of the things that makes me really like it is, uh, like we say often on the good comic book movies, they take the best bits and weave them into a really good story. And, yeah, I think... I think you would definitely be on good foot in reading that because if you like the movie, I think you'll love love those parts of the comic books. And uh, I don't want to to suggest that they're the only good bits. I think there are other good bits in the Sin City pantheon, but but some of it struggles for, or, or I struggle with it. I think is the honest yeah. Thing. As I say, I've I've heard from a lot of people that have read it that it's one of those of when it's good, it's good; when it's bad, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, it. Uh, that they're, they're, it's either one or the other. There's very little times where it's just meh. It's either really good or it's a bit dross. I, I think it looks really good, by the way. Like to pick up on the art, it, it, it has a it's lovely pretty. style to it. Yeah, and um, even let's say when I'm not so enamoured with maybe the words on the page, I can still look at it and go, "Oh, it does look good, though." <laughs> uh, so, what is your number four? Shame. Well, funny enough, um, with you sort of going for a Frank Miller one, um, playing in the world of some of the big boy creators, uh, and I'm I have a a big gap um, with Alan Moore. Uh, but when I say I have a big gap, one series in particular, and it is um, Promethea, and this had a kind of strange uh, publication history because it was being published by America's Best Comics, which I think was an offshoot of of Rob Liefeld's company for a time, and then Wildstorm. Um, and then, unfortunately, Wildstorm got um, swallowed up into DC and uh, Alan Moore doesn't play with DC that I think we've covered in uh, other episodes. But <laughs> yes. I I've never heard anything but fantastic things about this. So um, the story is uh, about, uh, alas, I think Sophie Bangs, 
was a college student uh, living in New York in 1999. And she's the embodiment of a, um, I want to say, and, and again, partially like, because I haven't read it, but my understanding is it's, it's like a goddess or a powerful entity known mm. as Promethea, who is supposed to bring about the apocalypse of the world. And then I think then you are following like her, her life and what being this embodiment means. And it feels to me like um, Alan Moore at his most crazy wizardy element. Yeah. And, and don't get me wrong. I, I, I feel like one, maybe one of the reasons why I, I've not got to it yet is I, I might actually slightly fear that it might go a little bit too crazy and wizardy for me. And maybe, uh, maybe in some cases might even be a little bit too smart for me. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, that kind of mixture of him playing with like science fiction, sort of spirituality, magic and things like that. Again, I say, why the bloody hell haven't I read it? And the only answer I have is maybe I'm a little bit afraid of it. Um, but I really want to. And I feel like it's one I should have read because I feel like Alan Moore's that good that I should read everything he's ever done. And having a big gap like this is unforgivable. Yes. My mum would tell me is, off. He is the wizard. He <laughs> is the wizard. Uh, so my number four. Yep. Shame. Is one that is right through there on the shelf. Which I got for Christmas, but I haven't started yet because of everything else we're catching up with. Joker's War Saga. And that's this relatively has... recent, isn't it? Like release wise. Yeah. That's that's last couple of years, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so you know, this has the Joker in it. It's a Joker centric run. Of course I have to read it. <laughs> You know, it's yeah, it so feels quite happy around doesn't it? <laughs> um, so yeah, I got the well, my dad got me the uh hardback uh version for Christmas with the full run in. Um, I've had a few like scan through to have a look at look at it, but not actually read any of it properly. It's fucking pretty, it is very, very pretty. Um, it's one of those of I don't know what it's about, but I know it's the Joker. So, yeah, I really want to fucking read it. Go, going back to, like, Reading Corner, and uh, we've talked about how much we love that Scott Snyder new 52 DC run before, haven't we? Yeah. And obviously I'm now going back to the Tom King run to try and read, uh, to try and kind of do that to completion. And I've talked about how much I love the Tom King run, and possibly I like it more than the Snyder one. Well, this Joker War is a story that comes from the next run afterwards, so this is uh oh, uh, apologies if I butcher the 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 name, but this is James Tinney in the fourth, and he yes. takes over Batman after Tom King goes. And I have heard amazing things about James Tinian's Batman run, kind of akin to what I heard about Tom King's Batman run and Scott Snyder's Batman run. But I just haven't tried the Tom, sorry the James Tinian one yet because I didn't want to jump into that before I'd finished Tom King's Batman. Um, but but yeah, I, I'm with you in my desire to kind of read this, but I think I want to nom 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 eat the whole James Tinian run when I finally um, uh, see the Tom King run to fruition. Yeah, so I think with this one, it's more of a my favourite character, a whole saga on him get into me. Well, and my understanding is, is that off the back end of this, um, and because it's currently being released, is... Uh, an ongoing joker so it leads into a joker series as well so who knows it might be uh if if we love joker war when we get to it you know you might be signing up for a joker series as well and take my money take my money well, again give us a bloody app you can take our money but at least it could be somewhat affordable for us to uh <laughs> to, to read this stuff yes what makes sure number three shame so I guess I'm back with one of the uh, big boy writers again, or certainly I think what's considered one of the big boy writers and a creator that I've, again, read a lot of. But this one is a 
gap for me. It was at a time. So so we're going back to the, oh, I want to say the late 80s, but possibly early 90s for this to, to be released. And uh, it's a DC comic. I wouldn't have been able to get my hands on DC Comics. And from what I understand about the series, I bloody well probably wouldn't have been able to uh, accept it or probably suck it in because it was nothing like what I was doing at the time. But it's uh, Grant Morrison's run on Doom Patrol. This okay. is, uh, from, from my understanding, absolute lunacy. He takes what had been a a storied group of oddities, some something probably somewhat akin to what the X-Men were supposed to be in the Marvel Universe. Uh, they give it to Grant Morrison and he goes wild. And this is early Grant Morrison as well. This is early for him in his American comic book run and probably a series that didn't have a lot of attention on it. So he was allowed to uh, be a little bit more free and creative. And as the run goes on, it actually uh, gets swallowed into vertigo. So it was allowed then going like more mature. Now, when I say it was swallowed yeah. into vertigo, this was at the start of vertigo kind of being an imprint. I have watched the Doom Patrol TV show, and I know that a lot of the concepts that they use in the, the Doom Patrol TV show are taken from this Grant Morrison run. Now, the Doom Patrol TV show is very kooky, I would say, and very weird. And I love the kooky and the weird stuff that they have in it. And I can only imagine that when Morrison is writing this in the comic book, you can times that by about 3,000 to how bizarre it would actually turn out. Um, I'm gutted a little bit that I never got round to, to reading it. It has been collected over the years, but I, I guess I've just never picked it up and got it into my house. Um, and it's yeah. not in my house at the moment, so this would have to be a purchase and uh, unless uh, DC Unlimited comes along. But <laughs> I... I it's, it's the big gap in Morrison's career that I have not experienced. So I feel like I really need to to get my grubby little mitts onto it at some point and actually see see where all the craziness started. Yes. I'm intrigued by that one as well. That sounds like that. Yeah. Fun. I mean, without having read it, I feel like it's something that would probably sit in your wheelhouse as well. I think... Um, uh, from from the stuff we we watch and the stuff we talk about and the music, I, I feel like this would float your boat, so to speak. Yes. So, what you got for number three, Z's? Shame. This one is very much shame. Shame. So I've never read. If if only I could do the uh, and I don't know. Do, actually, before I do this, did you watch Game of Thrones? Uh, not watched the first couple this. of seasons, but uh, I've then, been then, then you won't you won't know this. Well, I know the shame it's... bell. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, because I love that shame bell. Um, and in fact, if if anything, it's totally off topic from comic books. But when they did that shame bell, uh, I reckon my nieces were probably let's say ten and thirteen at that point, so couldn't watch Game of Thrones. But unfortunately, they stayed at ours the weekend after the shame bell was introduced into the show, and they could not do anything or move around my house at all without me following behind them, playing the shame bell over and over again. <laughs> so get ready for that shame bell. It is Jim Stalin, the Infinity Gauntlet. I have never read the Infinity Gauntlet, which is one of the biggest Marvel events so much so that they made the whole fucking film universe about it. Yeah, never read it. Now, it has been it's been sat in my uh, to buy list on Amazon. Right, uh, twenty fourteen, it went in there. <laughs> Still hasn't been bought. I, I have um, I have a bit of phenomenon with my Amazon wish list, and my Amazon wish list is, is predominantly designed for uh, members of my family to buy me presents because they don't seem to ever have any idea of what I like or what I do. So um, I put stuff on there because then when it's birthdays or Christmas, they can just pop on and, and pick something. And much like you say, 2014, I've got stuff on there that's from around that time. And then I never got to kind of point it out, but every now and again, one of them sort of says, oh, you've had that on there for years. And I go, yeah, that's because you've never bloody bought it for me. That's the point. Um, <laughs> it will stay on there forever until you buy it. Uh, 
for context and 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 this is my personal feelings on this but it's kind of my memory of it is this is great i love the infinity gauntlet i think it's fantastic but you know when you say it's one of the biggest events it was a big event but it's bigger because of the movies like mm. at the time it was in a bit more and it integrates most of the characters from the marvel universe but it was a bit of an offshoot of some of their lower selling books at the time and it's just because it was so bloody good yeah that people really really bought into it and of course i think because it was so bloody good that's why um and probably kevin feige goes I want to build this movie universe and I want this to be the culmination of it. But um, probably at the time, events wise, uh, it would have been considered maybe a, a B tier event, possibly. Um, but but yeah, I, I, it is. It is absolutely phenomenal. Um, can I add to your shame for this, though? Go. Because... There's a run. So Jim Starling comes on to the Silver Surfer comic book. And I was actually really enjoying the Silver Surfer. This this is one I read live, bitches. Um, it's, um, the Silver Surfer comic book was really good. I really enjoyed it. Steve Englehart was uh, writing it at the time. Very, very enjoyable. And then Jim Starling comes on. And he starts to move the story towards Thanos and what ultimately is the Infinity Gauntlet. So just to add to your reading, I think the build-up in Silver Surfer it's worth reading before you read the Infinity Gauntlet because I think it makes the Infinity Gauntlet a much better story. Now, um, I guess it would somewhat be the same of don't don't watch the last two Avengers movies without watching the preceding movies. That somewhat yeah. feels like Infinity Gauntlet for me. But but even more than that, um, there is a oh my god, I wasn't prepared because I didn't know what your list was. There is a Thanos, and I'm going to try and Google it while we're on the show. There is a Thanos. Um, series or, or I think it's series. I think it was two deluxe issues, and I, I want to say it's Thanos Quest, and I'm looking it up now, and it is Thanos Quest. Um, that I would say, if it's not integrated into any collected edition that you that you've got of Infinity Gauntlet, I would say even if you don't read the Silver Surfer stuff, Thanos Quest is a must read before Infinity Gauntlet, and I would actually argue is better than Infinity Gauntlet. But it's a, a a story of how we get to the Infinity Gauntlet, I guess. Um, but yeah, that okay. is that is marvelous as well. Um, but but I, but I wouldn't be shocked if it wasn't in the collected editions as well, because it is Let's basically say, the, is... kind of the prologue. Yeah, let's have a look. Get get the Amazon app up again. Yes, Amazon, Amazon. I'll get you buying it by the end of this show. Not yet. You can sell a lung, can't you? Still waiting for that refund. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, doesn't say what's in the so the deluxe well, editions is issues one to six plus bonus extras. I mean, it could be now. So now I say doesn't tell because... you what the bonus extras are. And while we're doing this live, and when I say live, I do realise we put the show out afterwards, but. Uh... In good news for you, uh, Thanos Quest 1 and 2 is available on Marvel Unlimited. Huzzah. And, and, yeah. I guess, and I guess that's... that's, that's neat, that? <laughs> yeah, and, and, <laughs> I think, and I think the Silver Surfer, Silver Surfer run is. Um, yeah, I, I, I back you all the way, and I, I say like the, the, the shame bell. Um, I think it potentially feels more shameful because, of, as I say, it's linked to the, the, the huge rise of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um I'd recommend reading it because it is really good. Um, but don't be too ashamed of it because I think if it wasn't for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you probably wouldn't have it on that list. Yeah. I think that has, I guess, grown the exposure of it. Um, but yeah, it's really good. Get it done. Get her done. Get her done, indeed. So, what is number two on your list of shame? Shame. Number two on my list of shame is something that I have read some of. So I guess it's uh, uh, not the only one, but this one I have read some of. I love what I have read. Um, I quite often speak to one of my friends about this because it is his 
favourite uh, comic book of all time. And um, as I say, I love what I've read. But I've got very, very big collected editions of this in my house. Um, of course. That have yet to, yeah, that have yet to be read. And, and it is Hellboy. And this is not only Hellboy, but uh, I'd like to kind of integrate BPRD in that as well, which has its own series, which, again, I have very chunky collected editions of. Um, so this is kind of Mike Mignola's uh, Dark Horse published initially series about a character that he created but of course then turns into an amazing creation of a whole universe and a whole universe that i think you know eventually he had to start to allow others to play and like he had to get other artists in and things like that but he always has maintained the style and look of it all the way through now so people may only know him from the movies and of course the stuff in the movies is based from the comic book the comic book uh, Mike Minola's art is fantastic it's not your socks it's really strange I remember the first time I ever saw his art was on the cover of X Factor um, an X-Men spin-off and oh my god I rejected that issue because I went what the hell are you doing this doesn't look like superheroes and it didn't because his stuff doesn't but it has such a distinct style but I have read, I think, the first library edition, which is, mm. which I want to say collects maybe the first three limited series. But this is a hugely bountiful story. When he started it, he had a beginning, a middle and an end. And I'm sure he added and embellished stuff into it as he went along, as he had more ideas. But my God, I will continually stay in shame until the day that I have read all of this. It is a beast, though, because if you add in BPRD, that is a lot, a lot, a lot of comic books to get through. But if in five years' time we go back to a What's Our List of Shame Now and this is still on it, it, it would be my number one if it was still there in five years' time because it, it needs to be read. And as I say, from what I have read, it's bloody amazing. So there's So there's no reason why I could ever imagine that the rest of it wouldn't be as good. If only we didn't have to work. Yeah. We had all yeah. that free time. Well, when you know, like um, we've covered it on some of the other stuff, uh, certainly some of the other shows we do. And if only I didn't have an addiction to Football Manager, which took up vast amounts of my time as well. Um, and, 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 you know, some things you can consume in passing, can't you? So you could have, like, for example, a game of Footy Manager up in the background, but be reading something and just go, it's fine. The, the boys are all right. They're, they're three new up. Whereas this yeah. is so good, it's not. It's something where I just go, I I need f absolutely full attention. Probably not even any music on in the background or anything like that. Um, but it will be read. That is a solemn promise. As long as I don't get hit by a bus tomorrow, this will be read. It is a must read for me. Nice. Your number so, two, Z's? Shame. My number two is Batman Rebirth. The Tom King run. Um, I own. I didn't know this, by the way. When I when I did that earlier, three. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. So I own volume three, the Bane one. Um, I basically found it in a charity shop. It was like a quid, and I was like, "Yeah, I'll pick that up." Didn't realize until afterwards it was issue three of a run, and I was like, "Well, that can sit on the shelf, and I'll sort it later." Didn't look that it was Tom King. Didn't sort of put two and two together because at that point. This was a few years ago. Didn't know Jack from Adam. You know, I never went looking for writers except for people like Frank Miller or yeah. um, our wizard, a Alan Moore. Moore. Yeah. Um, and obviously Scott Schneider because of the, the fit New 52 run. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, it's, it's a Batman. I'll, I'll pick it up. Um, but yeah, so the rest of the, or the at least one and two are in my Amazon list to be bought at some point. And then once I've got them, I can start it. It's, if so anyone it's... from uh, Chris's uh, wider life is out there, get on his bloody wish list and buy him some of this <laughs> shit. <laughs> um, so yeah, so once I uh, get the uh, other two, um, I can then start it and then read book three that's been sat there for a while. Uh, but yeah, now after reading Tom King uh, doing Vision, um especially after issue one of killing time as well yeah i'm 
I'm like, yes, I I need to get into the, his Batman. I think very I've, I've very mean, much. I think I mentioned to you, to you before when we were doing um, I, I probably did, was it the might have been a Batman starting point. I mean, I I love this run and I actually yeah. like it more than Snyder's. I think to the most part, people tend to prefer Snyder's. Um, I think partially because Tom King's reputation at DC has d- diminished a bit because I think people see him as um, a, a, a bit too woke and maybe a bit too focused, not on the superheroics of things. But that was one of the things that I really liked about what he brought to this. I, I, I think, and you'll see this as you go through. For, for me, what resonated is I think he looked at the universe very well. He put attention outside of Batman as well. And I, I really like that. I mean, I love the Batman universe. And I think that's when it's at its best is that, um, Batman doesn't even have to be the main focus a lot of the time because you've got yeah. so many other good characters to play with. And um, uh, as I said, I've read about 60% of it and I love what I have read of it. I hope you love it too. And But I, I would say I, it's potentially a toss of a coin for me because I know your love of the Snyder run and, and purely because I've heard people kind of go, well, it's no Snyder run, is it? Whereas for me, it was comparatively slightly better i'm not going to get carried away it was slightly better because the snyder runs really good as well but yes i would be very i I cannot wait for you to read this so that we can talk about what we felt about it uh, and and whether it did resonate with you as much as it did with me yes it will be one that when i do finally you know get around to uh buying them i will get on it but before that obviously we've got the the beast of nightfall (laughs) stop reading (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah i mean what i will do is um i will have a look around my house because i feel like i bought a lot of the collected editions of this I, I i feel like i got a lot of them in physical copies rather than digital but i might be misremembering that um but if i do maybe i can facilitate getting some into them to you sooner rather than later but um yeah one that will depend on me being able to find anything in my house and two if i actually bought them and and then free if you do no, have no, them. No, we don't talk about that. Shh, we don't. And then they, 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 they sit about. in a box in different parts of the house. There's um for yeah for those that uh, are only watching this and haven't um followed. Uh, how long did I have that box in my house? Uh, I had some stuff to send to Chris, and I, I believe it's about three months. It sat in my spare room before I actually put it in the post. Um, At so least. my re- yeah, so my <laughs> reputation. I, I, I think on day one, I grabbed the stuff together and I boxed it. On day at least 100 was when it finally left my house. Uh... <laughs> so, what makes the top of your uh, pile of shame? Shame! And um, So you, you actually mentioned this in your honourable mentions and it was always going to be the top of my pile of shame because it has been the top of my pile of shame for... Uh, I'd say, well, just off of 30 years at this point, um, it's The Sandman by Neil Gaiman. Um, I have heard, I've never heard anyone say anything bad about this series. I, you, you mentioned God tier earlier. I think in the pantheon of comic books, most people would have it in their top 10 most a lot of people top five and for a lot of people it's number one or number two um i have read the first collected edition of this which i think is prelude preludes and nocturnes i think i've read that about five times um i have read probably volume two and three a couple of times i've never powered through now partially and this might be a bit weird when i say my pile of shame is i've never fallen in love with it I have tried and I have, I've not, it's ne- I've never not liked it, but I've never gone wow. Or yeah. I've never, it's never grabbed me like it seems to grab everyone else. However, everyone loves this. And I know he's a brilliant writer and I just think I need to try it at the right time for me. Um, as an aside, The Wire is one of my favourite TV shows of all time. It took me about seven goes to get past episode three of The Wire. And when I finally got past episode three, or when I I finally watched those three episodes and it clicked with me, from then I loved it. And I, I feel like that's what Sandman is for me. It just needs to catch me at the right time, in the right mood, 
because I've had a few goes and I clearly wasn't in that mindset. Um, yeah. And and I do know as well that a lot of people say as it goes on, it gets better and better. It's a story that builds on itself. He builds this great mythos over the course of the series. Um, but yeah, I need to read this. Um, and even if ultimately I, it still never captures me quite as much as I hope it would. I just think I need to plow through. I need to do it because it's just too much of a gap in my comic reading history. Yeah, it's that sort of thing of like those must-see films and, you know, yeah. how, how have you not seen this sort of level of stuff? It's yeah. that it's that of comic books, really. And it was saying, man, it's that, like I said with Sin City earlier on, you know, the, there's these certain things that are ten poles of... yeah these are your massive comic book moments. Well, it's strange, isn't it? Because like, it's those that Sin City and this are the sort of ones where I feel like if I walked into a book of like comic fans, comic book readers and said, I hadn't read that, I'd almost be shunned for going, well, you, you can't be real if you haven't read that. But also if I walked into a room full of people who don't really read comic books, but have read, let's say five different collected editions, they probably would have read Sandman. Like it has a wider audience than just the comic book fans, but it, yeah, as I say, I just I, I I haven't done it. Um, it will be done though at some point. Yeah, it's it's one of those ones I've noticed it because I think it's on an anniversary year this year. Yes, um, I think it's uh thirty years. No, no, so next year I think it's thirty years of publication. I think because I've I've seen lots of anniversary editions coming onto my Amazon timeline when flicking through bits and pieces so I was like it must be some sort of uh they're, they're pushing it again because it's not an anniversary well and, and i mentioned it earlier with doom patrol i mean this this when it was being published it started off in the dc universe proper or the dc universe publishing line and this probably was the thing that really pushed them to create vertigo because i think they saw that gaming was making something that um was a bit special and not only yeah. was it a bit special, but probably skewed to a more mature audience and probably maybe not for people who were going in and, and buying their regular monthly titles. And 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 Sandman, yeah, but probably birthed Vertigo, which um not around anymore, which is a huge shame for me. But there are so many great series that started um and finished at Vertigo that I think for historical significance, uh, I feel like I should read it to pat it on the back because there's a lot of comic series that I probably wouldn't have got to read if this hadn't been around. Yeah. So my number, number one. one. Shame. Frank Miller's run of Daredevil. So this is one of those if, ones. If that... by the way, Chris, if I can capture the shame bell, you're fucking getting it for this. Shame. To be fair, I really I'm doing it to me to on it. Sandman. I'm doing it to me on Sandman as well. Don't get me wrong, but you're getting it for this. See, with this, I had or no, I now have it in the house. It only took a month for it to be delivered. Um, but yeah, it is one of those of where you and other people have gone. You love Batman. You love Frank Miller's Batman you need to do his Daredevil. Yeah. Because it's better than his Batman. And I'm like, I, fuck off. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. It, it is tough. I and mean, you almost don't want to overhype something. But I, I do, honestly, hand on heart, think that it is as good, at least, and I do think it's probably better. And I think you're going to bloody love it. But yeah, it's, it, 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 it is me to a T, really, isn't it? It's dark, it's nasty yeah violent and it's frank miller so and this is pre him going weird um <laughs> like yeah, he has yeah. recently yeah so yeah this this is one that you know is now in the house it is i now have it um it is actually once nightfall part two has been read will be the next big thing I read. And we're doing a bloody episode on it as well. Yep. 
so you know once nightfall's done it's that and then i'm going back on the batmans and going a bit more modern with batman <laughs> but makes you sound like you you're weaning yourself off crack and then you're going back onto heroin um I mean, I, I, you know what i say about i mean one of the things you said about like dark and 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 that i think that's the truth of it i think it goes into that street level hero and it's a common term now street level hero but i'll be honest certainly in the marvel universe um yes there were people who had maybe lesser villains but this actually for me establishes probably what street level heroes are now yeah. and were from this point onwards um and the establishment of the villains being nasty and real legitimate threats because they are bad guys you know like we you're not getting the the jovial ha ha like traps and things like that these are bastards they are doing yeah. really horrible things to people and of course because it is at that street level and it's based around hell's kitchen um, you get to see the community. And so you get to see this wider cast, but without that wider cast necessarily having to be, um, you know, like a, a, someone's cousin or someone's brother or someone who ultimately yeah. turns into a superhero. Um, it's it's probably... One of the reasons why I think it's probably better than his Batman is I think he gets a bit more freedom with this. And I'm not saying DC held him back on his Batman, but Batman is Batman. Yeah, And Batman at that stage was bloody massive. Daredevil and you was... couldn't really reinvent yeah. Batman. You could tell different stories. And and with his Batman run, yeah, he, he does go more detective and also more brutal yeah. than anything Batman was doing at the time. But Batman's still Batman. You know, dead parents, millionaire, and we know the cast of villains. Yeah. So, you know, there was not really... You know, he did great with what he could do, but he yeah. couldn't reinvent the wheel. Well, and Whereas Daredevil's think... sales were in the gutter at the point where Miller got it. I mean, it was pretty much on the verge of cancellation. I think they just went, fill your boots, mate, do what you want. And, you know, like how beautiful for a creator, probably, yeah. to hear that, fill your boots, do what you want. Um, and he makes magic with it. He really does. Um, mm -hmm. And I say reinvents a character. You know, he really does. And I think, I think, but he reinvents, he invents and reinvents multiple characters. Yeah. And changes the way marvel does their comics from this point onwards um there is a lot of uh, a lot of great series and a lot of great stories that just wouldn't happen i think if you don't have that miller daredevil run and of course as i say because he wasn't a big franchise character like batman gives you that freedom to i'm gonna say take liberties the wrong term but be able to change the want. character more dramatically than yeah. you would with batman i mean you know, uh, subsequent runs and things like that, stuff that happens in this gets undone, gets redone. That's comic books, baby. That's how it works. Yeah. But you don't get to do that. You don't get to do dramatic stuff so often with Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, etc., etc. Whereas, um, yeah, this is uh, bloody marvellous. I think it, I think you reading this, oh God, I really am overhyping it now. I think this could, could ping into your top five comic books once you've read this because i think it is right up your alley so one of your suggestions has gone up there with you know vision has jumped into my top five i, I think daredevil oh. will kick that out i think you'll like daredevil more than you like uh vision right um but i hope they both stay in there but crow's now in there as well because i you know never had read that until recently but yeah, so as I said, it is it is literally staring at me on my table. I can see Daredevil Volume 1 right there. And uh, yeah, once uh, the beast has been tamed, it will be on. Oh, I want to give it one last bit of hyperbole, because I don't think I've, 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 I've said how much I like it. Did I mention I like this? Um, from issue one... Of, oh, and I say issue one, it wasn't issue one, it was issue 300 and whatever, I can't remember now. From issue one, you will fucking love this. From the first four pages, you will love this. I guarantee you. And I won't tell you what happens, but it's just an amazing start to a story and something yeah. that um, you probably, you definitely weren't seeing at the time. But even um, even those like, like the world changing comics after this, um, I think 
he, you'll still kind of contextually go, whoa, if I'd have read this at the time, other comics weren't doing this stuff. Yeah. So they are our piles of shame. Shame. Hopefully, what? fingers crossed, to not be our piles of shame at some point. We, we, we plan to get well, to these. So of mine, one of them now I can do because it's I've got we've got Disney Unlimited. One of them I don't own. Two of them are in the house. And the other one I just need the first two issue or first two collected before I can start reading. Yeah. So you know You're I'm further down the line now I am. I mean I, I've got some of the stuff like collected in the and, house, but there's stuff I haven't got as well. Yeah. And of the honourable mentions half of them are in the house and then or i have access to you know the, there's only the uh the grant morrison run and the uh sandman and the batman heavy metal stuff that you know are, are grail level trying to find but and everything large, else is doable on my last part so. i noticed when i was going for mine that um all of mine kind of are 50 issues plus as well so it, it's not only the source in it it's it's the time but um I, I think t for me, why those were more on my piles of shame is, you know, when you hear people talk or you read and people talk about an extended quality, you know, they didn't just bang out five good issues. Um, yeah. I don't get me wrong. I love, I love a good five good issues, but when you're looking at 50 plus issues and people still go, this is great. Oh, that's, that, that is like crack to me. I'm like, yeah, give me some of that. And I, I kind of go, why haven't I um, e experienced these yet? And as I say, like time, cost, um, um, it being available at the right time, that's been preventative on some of them. And, and as I say, some of them I have tried and liked, but just not got around to finishing. Some of them I've tried and didn't like, but no, I should. But um, but yeah, I think, it, I think one of the reasons why I kind of wanted to do this is one, to confess this stuff so that it probably might push me towards it. But also, I think it was to highlight that, and, and hopefully that's what we do on this show, is that there's so much good stuff out there. Like, these are just, like, some of the stuff that's on there. There, there was a lot that was considered that got nowhere near my list, purely because I went, Jesus Christ, I've got to, like, carve this down to some uh, some absolute core essentials. But um, there's stories for everyone out there, and there's stories of every sort of ilk and type. Um and it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll just read one story and stick with that. It might then lead you to um, other stuff and other genres within it. But, but my God, comics are bloody brilliant. And they are. There's a lot of shit as well. But you know, we 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 will we will generally when we like to do our bad episodes every now and again. But we will generally try and focus in on the really good stuff, won't we? Yes. Um, so as always, like, subscribe, ring bells, do the YouTubey things. Um, not the bell of shame for this, the bell of liking. Yeah, the bell of shame is for what you've not read. Yeah. Um, if you've got a pile of shame, let us know, put it in the comments. Or, or if you've read some of the stuff that's in our pile of shame and you want to say, bloody read this, you idiots, why haven't you got around to it yet? Then that might also be the kick that we need up the bum <laughs> to uh, actually read some of this stuff. So, until next time. Goodbye, enjoy, and get reading.